Hi, my name is Dr. David Culber, and I'm the director of hand and upper extremity surgery at Cedar sinai Medical Center. And today I'm going to talk to you about nanoarthroscopy of the CMC joint. The invention of the nanoscope allows for visualization of small joints which are not accessible by traditional arthroscopy. The nanoscope is flexible and it has a flexible sheath. It allows access of the joint under minimal distraction. It allows for pre- and intraoperative diagnosis of arthritic severity, especially when x-rays do not correlate with arthritic findings. One is also able to perform arthroscopic synovectomy, and the images are easily downloaded and easy to share. Treatment options for CMC arthritis traditionally have included activity modification, splinting, and corticosteroid injections. Operative treatments include trapezial resection with allograft or joint resurfacing, and full trapezial resection with LRTI or suspension plasty. What you see is not always what you get. Radiographic imaging does not always correspond with the severity of disease based on arthroscopic findings. Here you see a patient with minimal radiographic findings of CMC and STT arthritis. However, using the nanoscope, we see the CMC joint has significant arthritis and a chondral defect, as well as significant synovitis at the STT joint. We studied 20 patients with CMC joint pain and noted that 60% of the patients had more severe arthritis seen with the arthroscope than on x-ray. Only 5% had less severe changes on arthroscopy when compared to the radiograph, thus concluding that there is a greater discrepancy of arthritis when x-rays appear to be mild or moderate. In short, x-rays don't always correspond with the arthroscopic findings. Our indications for nanoscope arthroscopy include radiographic findings of CMC arthritis, minimal CMC joint subluxation, radiographic degeneration at the STT joint, and significant pain that has failed to improve with non-operative intervention. Interventional options for nanoscope arthroscopy include diagnostic arthroscopy, arthroscopic synovectomy, and trapeziectomy. The arthroscopic setup includes positioning the patient in the supine position using a hand table and a non-sterile arm tourniquet. Traction can be placed longitudinally on the thumb to gain access to the CMC joint. Portal setup includes a 1R portal for viewing and a 1U portal for working. The STT joint can also be established through the 1U portal. Equipment includes both the nanoscope, a 2.0 shaver, and tubing or manual injection for fluid into the nanoscope. Here is our current setup. You can see the 1U portal with the nanoscope and 1R portal for the shaver and the screen visualizing the CMC joint. You also can see the tubing connected to the nanoscope. For arthroscopic portal placement, first palpate the CMC joint, and then identify the first extensor compartment tendons. The 1U portal is placed ulnar to the tendons, and the 1R portal is placed radial to the tendons. Gentle traction is placed on the thumb CMC joint. The CMC joint can also be confirmed using a 25 gauge needle, placing gentle traction on the CMC joint and using a fluoroscan to confirm the placement of the 25 gauge needle. Once the position of the portal has been established, a longitudinal incision is made through the skin. Spreading is performed longitudinally in order to protect the radial sensory nerve. The portal can be entered using a blunt trocar. Using a sharp trocar can injure both the tendon and or the nerve. Viewing of the scope can be achieved by putting the nanoscope through the 1U portal. Care is taken not to put the scope in too deep as this is a common mistake. So gently pull back on the scope to visualize the dorsum of the CMC joint. Turn off the overhead lights in order to improve the visibility of the screen and then attach the tubing for fluid. Similarly, establishing the STT joint portal go through the 1U portal and then just pull back gently over the trapezium into the STT joint and use a blunt trocar to establish this portal. Do not use a needle to try to find the STT joint as the radial artery is in that vicinity it can be damaged. If you have trouble finding the STT joint, 
you can use the blunt trocar under fluoroscan to identify the STT joint. Establishing the one arm portal, again, gentle traction, use a blunt trocar to go in the one arm portal. This also can then be visualized and then place the shaver through the same portal. Synovectomy can be performed under direct vision as in this photo. Care is taken to preserve the dorsal capsule. Care is also taken to preserve the anterior oblique ligament, as you can see here. This photo also shows arthritic changes in the metacarpal base as well as the trapezium. With the fluid on and the shaver on suction, a synovectomy can easily be performed of both the scapho-trapezial joint as well as the CMC joint, as you see in this video. After the synovectomy is complete, the fluid is removed with a cannula. Postoperatively, the patient's placed in a thumb spike uh, splint for about three weeks and then transitioned to a removable hand-based splint for another three weeks. They can go for some hand therapy for two to three weeks and by six weeks, resume normal activities. In conclusion, nanoarthroscopy has allowed us to change our clinical treatment and paradigm of CMC arthritis to a less invasive intervention. Nanoarthroscopy allows us to preserve near-normal anatomy. We are seeing excellent results in our patients without significant complications, with an average six-point decrease in pain at both rest and with activity. We believe that nanoscope arthroscopy is the future for treating arthritis of the CMC and STT joint. Thank you.